mind, okay, lazy men. Lazy men make hard time. Now, this is just unique to men, but it's kind of interesting to think that hard times make good men and, I added, women. You know, the interesting thing that's kind of funny about that saying, and the reason why it really has any humor to it, is because it's true. It's true. It's true. So, do hard times make us better? And if hard times can help make us better, why then do we spend so much time and energy and effort trying to avoid hard times? I don't say I have the answer here, but I know that um, you don't have to be too old to experience trials. And here's kind of my little paragraph that I was struggling with how to say this. I don't even know if this is the right way to say it, but this is what kind of the Lord put in my heart. I'm not here to say that by any stretch of the imagination that all trials can make us a better person. We live in a world of sin, and sin brings trials, but there is evidence, good evidence, that most trials, even difficult ones, can help us in the long run. But a lot depends on how we choose to respond to trials we are facing. In the book of Luke, we read a story about a trial. Let you please take your Bible. We'll turn to Luke chapter 5. This is where I get to bring my glasses on to help me. This is a, a somewhat trial that I've experienced in the last few years. Not too bad of a trial, actually. Here we go, Luke chapter 5. I invite you to follow along with me. We're going to be reading a few verses here. And I would, I would love to ask a favor. I don't know how you're going to do this. You'll have to figure this out. But I'd like for you to kind of put your mind in a spot where you give, give yourself permission to say the thing you've never heard this way before ever in your life. Okay? So you're kind of trying to figure out, never heard the story. Listen, I'm trying to listen to this story for the very first time. Let's try it. Okay? Let's try it. Here we go. Luke chapter 5, starting verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, by the way, let me back up here for one thing. It's in Luke chapter 5, where this is set context here. Jesus, sorry, this is a story about Jesus. This is early in Jesus' ministry. In fact, it's so early that Jesus has not even chosen the 12 men to serve as his disciples. Okay? You get it? The disciples have not been chosen. But as we're on time, as we read through this, that's about to change. At least for the sake of time. Here we go. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, Jesus, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships. Standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them as they were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed that he would thrust out the little from land. And he, could, he sat down and taught the people on, out of the ship. So you got the picture here? Jesus has come, he's asked this guy if he can get in his boat, to move the boat out of the way. So he's using kind of the boat as a platform. Now, when he had left speaking, or when he was done speaking, Jesus said to Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a fish walk. And my Bible said, drop. We'll talk about that later in just a second. And Simon, answering, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net great. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. Sink? Oh, because there's so much fish. 
And Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. But he was astonished, and at all that were with him, at the drop of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ship to land, they forsook all and followed. That's where we're going to see these stopping today. Right there. First 11 verses of Luke chapter 5. Many people would say, perhaps, that the biggest trials that stand out in the story is Simon, James, and John fished all night and didn't catch a thing. Remember, fishing isn't a hobby, guys. It was how they made a living. How they put food on the table. How they survived. It wasn't like they were on a fishing trip with a bunch of guys for a couple of days to relax and enjoy the water and the fresh air. You know, I know of one person in my family who loves to fish. I don't know everybody who loves to fish. But I know one person who loves to fish. And they, they even go on trips with fish. Have you ever talked? Have you ever heard of something? Quite a bit. But let these, let's not these guys, let's not miss it. But just imagine with me for a moment that you were with them as they started fishing that night. Put yourself there. You're with them. Boat they're getting ready, they call the nets ready. They cast out, they put their net in the water, they pull it out. Nothing. They would cast the net. Pull it in. No. They would cast the net. They would pull it in. Nothing. So some have this as a great idea. Now, if you're a fisherman, what do you think their great idea is? Hmm? Go home? No, no, that would be a fisherman. Fisherman said, well, there's no fish right here. We need to move the boats. Find a better spot. So I'm sure somebody said, we'll move the boats find a better spot, go to find a better spot, put the net in, pull it out, no. They put the net in, they pull it out, no. <laughs> over and over, all night long. You know, it's a little different scenario than when you like catch a reel with a bobber. You sit waiting for the fish to catch, right? That's not what they're doing. They're working hard. Working hard all night long. This is their livelihood. They're trying to get some fish. Cuffs, pull, no. Cuffs, pull, no. How do you think they were feeling early in the morning as they were cleaning the nets? What do you think? That was a great night out on the lake, wasn't it? And the moon was beautiful. I couldn't believe how calm the water was. It was glistening up fish. <sighs> Oh, it's such a wonderful night. We love to fish. Love to fish. It's down that way. You think that would happen out of conversation? No. Oh. Right. <laughs> then Jesus showed up. Jesus asked Peter if he could get in the boat. He knew that there was a podium of sorts for the seats of the crowd of people gathering along the shoreline. What if Peter would have said, No. I'm in the I'm not sure about feeling this way. I work all night. I didn't catch a thing. But Peter did say that. He helped him. The Bible, the Bible didn't say how long Jesus actually caught the people. The Bible didn't even tell us, I think, in that particular scenario, even what he said to the people. The people on the shoreline, you with me? But when he was done, he turned to Peter. And said to him, launch out to the deep and let down your nets for a draw. Now the definition of it, did I make something? Going back to my sorry. The definition of draw, it's not a word I use very often, and maybe more people here do this one than I do, but it's to draw.
draw them out before he pulls them. So Jesus is saying, go and put your nets out and pull them in. They've been pulling them in all night, nothing to show for it. Surely you've been in a situation where you've been trying hard to do something, spent time, energy, effort, and you've come up with nothing. You're in the spot by yourself. Simon is still in the same way. We can tell by how he responds to Jesus in the response. And Simon, the answering, says again, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. In other words, Jesus, it's been a rough night. There are no fish out there right now, especially for those who are waiting for time. The verse continues. Nevertheless, we, in this case, in spite of our, in spite of what we're told, or having said what they've been told, or at any rate, at my word, I will let down the net. I've heard some preachers say, Simon said these words very, very loud. You ever heard that? He said it very loud so that all the fishermen and all the people on the shoreline realized that going back out to fish was not Peter's idea, but it was Jesus. Basically, maybe kind of something like this, okay? Just so everybody knows, I don't think it's a good idea to go back out fishing. Because it's the wrong time of day, and there are no fish out there now anyway. But, having said that, because you're asking, I will let you know. Peter didn't want to look back to it. I wonder what the other fishermen were thinking as Simon rode the boat out to fish. What do you think they were saying? Sometimes the trial we may be facing is harder because of what other people think or say. I can imagine James or John being within earshot of Simon as he starts to go back out and kind of shouting out and saying, Simon, you've got to be kidding me. Simon glances over to look at them, and they are both kind of just sitting there shaking their heads. You know, Simon was actually dealing with maybe two tribes at this part of the story. Trial one would be he had fished all night and caught nothing. And trial two was, look, if you tell me you put a trial there in the water, play like you did not see trial there. Don't look for it, you don't get trial there. Trial two, he was asking to go fishing again at the long time of day. He was asked in front of a crowd, and even his fisherman friends, who thought it was strange. Peter pressure himself to the trial. But Simon continues to row. After rowing for a bit, Simon would have said, You know, Jesus, I thought this over, and I changed my mind. I think it would be better if you got to go back out to fish. No, he didn't say that. He may have thought it, but he didn't say it. He just continued to row. When they got to the spot where Simon Peter was told to let down the net, how much faith do you think Simon had? They were going to catch fish. Now, how do we we'll scale here in the Bible? Let's take a look. Here's our faith score. Okay, this is our faith score. Here we are. One to ten faith scores. One, two, or three, that would be kind of like no faith. Somewhere, some faith would be five, six, seven, and then somewhere in there. And absolute faith would be like an eight, nine, ten. You know, I know Bonnie likes some kind of things. I don't know if you're going to find it all. It's easy. But on a scale of 1 to 10, where do we think that our friend Simon was in regards to when I cast that net in that water, thinking, thinking that we were going to get some fish? Huh? What do you think? Two? Two? Be generous with your faith, maybe? Yeah. Two, three, maybe? I don't know. 
I think it's called the Great Love. Let me ask this. What was your taste? Here's the next one. In order to receive the blessing from the trial, how much faith did Simon need to have? How much faith did Simon need to have to get the blessing from the trial? Basically, all Simon needed to do was to do what? Yeah, he had to listen to Jesus and to let down the name. Listen to Jesus, let down the name. Faith scale, follow the great love. Listen to Jesus, let down the name. Once the net was let down, as we heard in the story, it was bulging with fish. More fish than he had ever seen in his, in his, in his entire life. Remember, he was a professional fish. He probably grew up by the sun of a professional fish. He knows fish. Okay? This was more fish than he had ever seen. In the frenzy of all the fish, he called for help from John and James who were in another boat. Now the Bible doesn't tell us. We don't know where James and John were. Were James and John back on shore with the boat? Sitting there watching what was going on? Or had they followed along because they were curious? I don't know. I don't know where they were. Well, they were somewhere within earshot because Simon yells and James and John hop in the boat or quickly, I imagine they probably sat sometimes in the boat with each other to get to the, to, to, to Peter, to Simon Peter and Jesus. Who knows? Who knows? Point is that they got there quickly. At any rate, the scripture says, shortly after James and John arrived, the magnitude of the event that just happened hit Simon like a ton of fish. I was going to say a ton of fish, but I thought a ton of fish meant a ton of fish. And that's where we face trial number three. Since nobody looked at this one, so I'm pretty sure we're out of share. He recognized himself that he truly was. A sinner, and he asked Jesus to depart. You with me? Old Victor kind of played that way, right? Now, not only did Jesus not depart from Simon Peter, right? Simon Peter asked him, Depart from me. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Jesus did depart, but he did exactly the opposite. He called him to follow him and to make him fisher of men. The way the trial of Simon Peter turned into a big blessing in his life hinged on a four word phrase earlier in the story. Now, I had the privilege to be out in Trinity Sabbath School class. Did today, but most of the time I read out of Trinity Sabbath School class. And one of the ways we learn scriptures in the Bible is by playing a game. Some people call it king. Sometimes you play a game called Password, but a lot of times we play the game of King. You guys have played the game of before, haven't you? Huh? Violent game. Violent game, yeah. Well, we don't do it violent. Okay. So, we're going to play a quick game of Hint. Okay? So, I'm just going to put it up here. All right, so this is word number one, this is word number two, this is word number three, word number four. All right, so what we'll do here is we'll just take one person from each section, and uh, we're going to see if we can figure out what this four-word phrase might be, okay? So I'll do girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, okay? So I'm going to start with this section over here. We'll go with seven. Sarah, choose a letter in the alphabet. You can guess a vowel, or you can guess a consonant, whatever you want. But see if it might be here. And if you want to solve the phrase, feel free to go ahead and solve. A. So I'm going to put up here. Sarah chose an A. Can anybody see that? Let's see if there's an A up here. Oh, there is an A, Sarah. That's good news because um, you're going to have a chance to really get because the letter that you get. 